I'm Francesca Maxime, and this is Current. Dramatic news out of Cuba, and we get reaction from a leading American archbishop. The bishop from the Diocese of Immigrants opens up on immigration elsewhere. The problem is not at the border, it's in the workplace. And until we secure the workplace, you can't secure the border. And he's the man at a long-standing festival in Brooklyn. Forty years of waiting, and here it was. I just couldn't believe it was here. Well, good evening, and thank you so much for joining us. Matt McClure has the night off. Could this be a sign of even bigger changes for Cuba? The first of 52 freed political prisoners landed in Spain today. The dissidents were granted their freedom last week following talks between Cardinal Jaime Ortega Alamino, Cuban President Raul Castro, and Spain's foreign minister. This latest news is also a sign of hope across the Florida Straits, where around a third of the population of Miami is Cuban. Miami Archbishop Thomas Wensky has been keeping a close eye on the latest developments, and I had a chance to talk with him by phone yesterday. Archbishop Wensky, thank you so much for joining us on Currents today. Thank you for having me. Now, we've just learned that with the assistance of the Catholic Church, Cuba has agreed to release approximately a third of its political prisoners, about 52 activists. Talk to me a bit about what you see as the Church's role in having assisted and facilitated that release. Well, I think this is uh, certainly uh, very consistent with the mission of the Church. Uh, again, Jesus uh, you know, came to announce good news to the poor and liberty to captives, and so the church uh, in, in helping facilitate this uh, is certainly faithful to her mission. At, at the same time, uh, it's very significant that uh, these talks took place between the Cuban government and the church because this represents uh, perhaps the first time that the Cuban government has uh, entered into a dialogue with a, let's say, a representative of the civil society uh, within its own country. Uh, you know, a totalitarian government doesn't think or believe that there is any other partners with which they should or could talk to yeah. within their own country. And and so uh, this, uh, this event shows that the church in Cuba has gained sig significant space and, and is uh, uh, hopefully uh, by engaging with the government uh, is not only, uh, you know, consolidating this space for itself, but also perhaps uh, making it possible for uh, for space like this to uh, be accorded to other actors in civil society. And you have said, Archbishop, that you're really hoping that it, in fact, has a soft landing. What are people saying? Do they anticipate that there are going to be problems that are following this, or do you think that it might, in fact, become a smooth transition? Well, uh, the release of the political prisoners does not mean that the uh, Castro regime is over by any means. However, uh, it is a positive sign right now that there is this uh, uh, flexibility on the part of the regime to uh, to release these political prisoners. Uh, hopefully, uh, uh, this will lead to other positive signs. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, the, the uh, you know the Castro brothers, uh, Fidel and Raúl, do not have term limits, uh, but certainly they have time limits. Sure. Yes. And, and, and therefore, uh, as uh, as they uh, leave the scene, uh, they, uh, you know, there will there will be a transition in Cuba, and the shape of that transition we do not know yet. Uh, but uh, you know, what we want is a, as I said, a soft landing, because uh, uh, you know, right now, uh, many people are a bit apprehensive because. Uh, nobody knows, uh, 
you know what direction uh, Cuba will go to. So it's in many ways it's like uh, you know being on top of a uh, roller coaster. You know just before you get to the top and it starts its downward descent. You know everybody is holding their breath and uh, they don't know what that ride is going to be like and and so they're just hanging on and, and holding their breath. Well hanging on and holding your breath along those lines what are people saying and what do you think the impact of this will be to people in Miami? Well, Miami, of course, is uh, uh, is um, very much tied to what happens in in, in Cuba when uh, you know when uh, uh, when Cuba catches cold, Miami sneezes, and vice versa. So uh, uh, the Cuban uh, the uh, exile community is watching the, these events with uh, uh, very carefully. Uh, of course, uh, uh, some in the community are very skeptical. They're, you know, they don't trust the government in Cuba. They are feared, uh, are fearful that the government might try to manipulate uh, these events to to strengthen themselves, etc. But uh, I think everyone is uh, quite relieved that these uh, prisoners are coming out of prison. Uh, because basically they shouldn't have been in prison in the first place. Sure, right. Uh, uh, because uh, they're you know prisoners of conscience, and uh, again uh, there are uh, other political prisoners in in Cuba besides this group of uh, fifty some sure. uh, that were uh, arrested in what they called the Black Spring of a of a few years ago, but. Uh, we would hope that the release of these prisoners would be the harbinger of the release of, of, of further... Uh, May open the door to further releases. Fur further releases, and, and, and hopefully that will uh, improve the human rights climate on the island. Very well. Well, Archbishop Wensky, that is all the time that we have right now on Currents, but we thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much. And stay with Currents for the latest on this story. We'll have much more on immigration also later on in the show when we hear from Brooklyn's own bishop. But stay tuned. When we return, we'll have the day's headlines, including the passing of yet another baseball icon. Welcome back to Currents. I'm Francesca Maxime. Coming up later, we'll talk to the VIP of this year's Feast of the Giglio. But first, let's have a look at the day's headlines. He was a larger-than-life figure in the sports world, and today, Yankees owner George Steinbrenner died in Tampa, Florida. Under Steinbrenner's ownership, the Yankees won seven World Series and 11 pennants. Steinbrenner was also known for his philanthropy, donating to a number of causes, including St. Joseph's Children's Hospital, Academy of the Holy Names, and Tampa Catholic High School, all located in Tampa, Florida. Monsignor Lawrence Higgins, a Tampa priest and longtime friend of Steinbrenner, said, People here liked him. They have a good level of respect for him. George Steinbrenner was 80 years old. The Vatican is calling on a troubled religious order to convene a special meeting and adopt new guidelines, as we hear now from Rome Reports. The Legionaries of Christ have to hold an extraordinary chapter to adopt new constitutions. Benedict XVI told them this in a letter given to Archbishop Falacio de Paulus, the pontifical delegate of the congregation. The Pope says it is necessary and urgent to take a journey of deep review of the charism of the Institute. At the same time, he tells members of the Legion he wants to accompany them and asks them not to leave disheartened at the sad events that took place. He also highlighted the zeal and fervor of a great number of the congregation's members. Also the papal delegate, Archbishop Velasio de Paulus told the legionaries the renewal asked for by the Pope implies to be aware of the situation and to individualize the causes that led to it. He also addressed those who doubt their vocation because of the scandals and asked for patience. He told them that it is something too serious to decide in a moment of disorientation as this. Last July 9th, the Pope appointed Archbishop Velasio de Paulus as his delegate to solve the congregation's problems. Although the Pope's letter points out that the delegate will govern the Institute in his name during the necessary time, the Legionaries of Christ say that until the Vatican publishes the decree on the roles of the delegate, Alvaro Corquera will continue as general director of the congregation and will continue exercising his authority.
The legionaries have been under heavy scrutiny following revelations of widespread sexual abuse by the congregation's founder. Religious freedom will be the theme for 2011's World Day of Peace on January 1st. In a statement, the Vatican says in many parts of the world, there are various forms of restriction or denial of religious freedom. The World Day of Peace has been celebrated every year since 1968. From Poland, one country that has fought for religious freedom, a controversial leader in the Solidarity Movement has died. Father Heinrich Jankowski became famous when he celebrated Mass for striking shipyard workers in Poland. Later in life, he was investigated for, but never convicted of, sexual abuse and was accused of making anti-Semitic remarks. The Alliance Defense Fund is calling for a Catholic professor at the University of Illinois to be reinstated. Dr. Kenneth Howell was fired for reportedly teaching students in a class on Catholicism that homosexual acts violate natural law. A student subsequently complained, calling the professor's words hate speech. Howell had been teaching at the university since 2001. A South African Cardinal says the World Cup built a sense of unity within Africa and around the world. In an interview with Vatican Radio, Cardinal Wilfred Fox Napier says, We believe in ourselves. We can see that we can do things, and we don't have to wait for others to do them for us. And finally, Vatican Radio has announced that the Holy Land will get its first Christian radio station. Vatican Radio is pitching in to help get the new station off the ground. It is expected to begin broadcasting on Christmas Eve. Well, stay tuned. There's much more current straight ahead. Just ahead, Bishop DiMarzio discusses the real immigration issue. Have compassion for the people who come struggling to try to make a, a new life for themselves and actually realize that they're a benefit to the society. Welcome back. The All-Star Game begins tonight in Anaheim, California, and already people are crying foul. Protesters are criticizing the decision of Major League Baseball to hold next year's game in Arizona, where a controversial new immigration law is taking effect. Some players are even threatening a boycott of the 2011 game. Closer to home, Brooklyn's Bishop DiMarzio has some strong feelings of his own about the Arizona law and immigration, and he discussed that with Rome Reports during a recent trip to Italy. The Diocese of Brooklyn calls itself the Diocese of Immigrants, and its bishop, Nicholas DiMarzio, says he is very proud of doing so. It has an immigration office that is 40 years old. It assists immigrants with legal matters, work issues, and ministry. While Bishop DiMarzio says Brooklyn is used to its immigrant population, he says some other areas have problems of xenophobia, and that this fear and not understanding immigration issues can push laws in the wrong direction. And if public opinion is wrong and the legislators don't want to stand up to it, uh, we have all of the laws like Arizona's law and other things that have happened and probably will happen until we get a better understanding of the issue itself. In April of this year, Arizona passed the nation's toughest law on illegal immigration, making the failure to carry immigration documents a crime and giving police the power to detain anyone suspected of being in the United States illegally. Bishop DiMarzio says he was disappointed when the Arizona law passed and that at face value it seems discriminatory. Unfortunately, it probably won't solve the problem because the problem is not at the border, it's in the workplace. And until we secure the workplace, you can't secure the border because people will continue to come. They need to come, we need the workers. In the United States, there are 12 million undocumented workers. Bishop DiMarzio says they need to have some sort of status, such as a national identity card. Bishop DiMarzio says in an ideal world, he would like everyone to understand immigration issues. Have compassion for the people who come struggling to try to make a, a new life for themselves and actually realize that they're a benefit to the society. That's the overall issue of immigration. Bishop DiMarzio says he believes the Arizona law might be a catalyst to some better action in the future, something he will be paying close attention to. Well, coming up, something immigrants brought to Brooklyn a hundred years ago lives on. When we return, we'll meet a man steeped in the traditions of his Italian culture. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience for an Italian boy from the north side of Brooklyn to be part of the feast.
We just heard Bishop DiMarzio's thoughts on immigration, an issue that hits very close to home here in Brooklyn, the Diocese of Immigrants. For proof of that, look no further than the streets of Williamsburg this week, where a festival brought here from Italy is alive and thriving after more than a century. It is the Giglio, the colorful feast that happens every July at Our Lady of Mount Carmel in Williamsburg. Last year, we first heard, we heard firsthand from one of the main figures at the feast, the Capo. The man who did it last year is filling the same role again this year, and so here again as our eyewitness is the Capo of the Giglio, Pat Grande. They say everybody wants to have the stick on Havamaya Street. That's the big show. It's a wonderful, wonderful experience for an Italian boy from the north side of Brooklyn to be part of the feast. The church itself has always been a big, big part of our life. This is our 122nd year of having the feast of San Paulina, a lady of Montcalm. It's something that my grandfather brought over here from NOLA. I had my father involved with it, my uncles, my cousins. I mean, it's, it's a family tradition that's been held in our family for 122 years. The structure itself this year, I did it in Our Lady of Montcalm colors because that's my, I, I, that's like my patron saint. Like, it was sort of my uh, tribute to her. Where I reach today is the number one capo. It took me about 40 years. I'm happy that I had this at this time in my life. Because sometimes men have it when they're in their 40s and, and early 50s, but I have it now with my grandchildren, you know, my daughters, my son-in-laws, and you know, it, it's beautiful because like, for a grandfather, there's nothing better than his grandchildren, even though your children get mad. <laughs> my first lift I made in honor of my mother and my father, and my, I lost a daughter at a young age. And I honored her, I made the honor for them. My first lift was in their honor. And then my second lift was in honor of my wife, of course, Joanne, who's still with me. And then my third one was for my daughters and my sister, who are still here. Today, I had the time of my life. I don't count them head by head, but I bet you there was at least uh, two or 3,000 people in the streets of uh, having my streets of Brooklyn to watch this. And to be my day, that, that I was blessed with such a lovely day. On top of everything else, we have beautiful weather, which made it you know, more superb, wonderful, you know. And we had a lot of fun because I have cousins that lift. Some are lieutenants, some are apprentices, some are honorees. Our Monsignor Khalees, who we have now with us, we are having a wonderful time with him. I hope he's having a wonderful time with us because we're really enjoying him. Monsignor Romano came and did the speaking today. He was a neighborhood boy. His mother still lives in the neighborhood right here on Graham Avenue. I think my children and my wife were a little more nervous than me. You know, they, they were so worried why I wasn't so nervous. I, was, I wasn't nervous, I was very excited. But I was just thrilled because I knew that it was like the, it's the right word, culmination of 40 years of waiting, and here it was. I just couldn't believe it was here. If people would have said to me, you would have said to me this morning, what do you think? I can't believe it's here. So I'm just very happy about this whole, this whole day. And the Feast of Vigilio continues all week. We have more information about it over on our blog. Just visit CurrentsNY.net and click on Riding the Wave. Well, that is it for tonight. Coming up tomorrow, the Defense of Marriage Act, or DOMA, comes under fire. We'll get reaction from the New York State Catholic Conference. We have that and much more tomorrow. Until then, remember, you can always check us out on Facebook, and if you have an idea for a story or you just want to get in touch, you can always drop us a line at Drop us a line at currentsny.net. That's our email. Drop us a line at currentsny.net. Until next time, I'm Francesca Maxime. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a great night.